Hello my soccer universe, let's continue with the pre-World Cup wrap-ups uh, and in this case we're done for the year in Austria and in Germany. I'm wearing Lusk, actually my favorite Lusk shirt, for the simple reason that Walder didn't win. It was such a great game that they played against Sturm Graz uh, Sunday. The last Bundesliga game in Pershing before they move into the new arena. It's not the last game because they have a cup game to be played in early February when the new stadium is not quite ready yet. But by the end of February, they're moving to the new arena. And everyone in Linz is probably excited about it. Despite, uh, it has to be said that Pushing probably, it's a small stadium. It's very, very tight. Um, there were discussions at times whether this, uh, the small field is not a disadvantage. But I think for a long time, this was actually quite the advantage for Lusk playing there and having the fans basically on top. Of everyone, I've been there a few few times. I have to say, the, the place I, I always got it was always that I behind the goal. I very often couldn't see like the last two meters of the pitch because it was uh, really every, everything on top of each other. Uh, the times will be well remembered. However, it is time to move into a modern and great stadium, and I see it every morning now when I drive down the hill. I see it on the other hill there. Uh, in the distance, uh, it looks really cool. I've been driving by there a few times and it strikes me how much taller it is. It is tighter because we had like an old athletics track and whatever, uh, but now this is uh, like twice the height, at least if not more of the old arena. It is, it is an amazing feeling to move in a new stadium. So yeah, uh, it's immense basically that Sturm is number two and Lusk is now number three behind Salzburg, which to me is also remarkable that it's not, none of the Vienna teams are at the moment in the really in serious contention for the top three place because they all have their troubles. I think Rapid having now a good turnaround ahead of the break and you see them in the Austrian um, charts <laughs> uh, rising up top have a good chance to move in there but it is the second third and fourth largest cities in austria that at the moment and combined they're not as big as vienna has also to be said uh that are at the moment uh dominating the bundesliga in a way over in germany i think i we can see probably three trends coming the first one, yes, uh, I said last week, Bayern and I in the lead and they used the midweek round and this round now to jups and we're ahead of the, com uh, the competition with a good distance in between us and them and that's it. We're done. We're done. That's, that's base pay basically. I think Bayern will easily win the championship. On the flip side, um, we have on the bottom, it's getting really, really tight. We had Schalke winning, we had Bochum. Uh, getting even a double. Uh, we have Köln, who have been actually really good overall, losing twice. We Leverkusen is moving out. Hertha and Stuttgart are getting wins. It is really, really, really tight on the bottom of the table in Germany. And uh, we have also two teams, <laughs> two plastic teams, if you like, in Wolfsburg and over in Leipzig. And Leverkusen is also kind of in there. They kind of get rolling. All these three corporate teams, and I think we have to call them, you know, this is Wolfsburg, this is Bayer company, this is the Red Bull company. All the three co corporate teams have been doing really, really, really well at the turnaround. Is And uh, Marco Rose has led now Leipzig up to the top of the table, seemingly. On the flip side, Dortmund. But this is part of Bayern just saying goodbye to the rest of the league. But I want to start in Austria, where we have only one round. They were smart, are smart enough, and you know, there's less games too to be played. Which started with the fall back down. We were losing our completely uh, uh, flattened Alltag for the second derby win um, in, in a row. And these two stadiums are the closest stadiums within in, in, in the league. Uh, it is actually a real local rivalry. And again, it's played right at the Swiss border, which to me is always a fun thing to do. Rapid Vienna get a win at Hartberg. It was a little bit hard fought, but they get it. And Tirol, a big one, a 2 0 over Reed, which cements their place up top. And Reed is more cemented towards the bottom of the table. Then Salzburg, hard fought, but in the end, deserved win over Klangfurt. Wolfsburg, I think, had three goals disallowed. Uh, one, the first one, we can totally uh, say this was uh, cor uh, correct. Then there was another one where the ball goes to the crossbar. 
on the line, behind the line. We don't know. There's no goal line technology. Up again and out. Uh, it suggests that it might have been behind, but uh, without the goal line technology, it's really, really hard. It's just that the third goal, which was actually second in that sequence, is the one where everyone is talk, talk, talking about because it's such a weird rule and I still don't quite understand it. Um, a ball is being played towards... Uh, Wolfsburg uh, striker who is uh, being defended by the Austria Vienna defender who both are kind of want to go for the ball and the Austria Vienna defender makes kind of a touch on the ball and it goes backwards towards the Wolfsburg striker who would have been offside however the ball is coming from the Austria Vienna defender and it is because of an uncontrolled uh, play this has to be seen as an offside. I do not understand that at all. Excuse me. This is one of those rules. I I think it needs to be explained to me. That if watch the highlights of the Vegas Wolfsburger, I'd say uh, it is it is that weird. However, the big one was really Lask against Sturm. This was uh, probably the best Bundesliga game this season. Probably. Not the most goal field, but in terms of intensity and quality that was in this game. It was just in, a, in many ways a nail biter. And there were not so many goal uh, mouth uh, scenes, but it was constantly on the man, attack, attack, um, uh, high pressing, uh, tackles, both teams generally. As soon as they had a ball, we go forward. Yes. It did not result in many uh, goal chances, but the way that it was played, it was so much fun to watch. But they were up and down. There was almost no midfield being played. Uh, and while Lusk probably had more of the game, it was probably better in the game, especially in the first half. It was Sturm Graz who had the biggest uh, chance where Ayeti at one point takes a shot. It hits the far post and comes back almost rolling behind the goalkeeper. And he gets again on the ball and it hits the near post, but on a very tight angle. So... Uh, double post, but then also, I mean, there was a free kick by Schul in, in it there. there. Uh, there were a few nice combinations of Nakamura and Goiginger. It was a little bit of a freak thing that it was a goalless half. However, the second half starts right out with a deep ball from Lasket Sturm. I don't know what they were doing. They tried to clear it one with the outside of his foot. The other one wants to yank it out. It just falls to Reiner from outside the box, who just hits it sweetly into the corner. One nil Lusk, and then the game took another level. Um, and it seemed at a while that Lusk maybe could, is even closer to the second goal until uh, Coach Ilza made three changes that completely changed the complexion of the game. Bringer Schneck, Horvath, and especially Emega. Uh, the um, players who came off were not happy about it. But the quality the Sturm have on the, uh, on the bench is probably that just a tad that is a little bit better than Lask at, at the moment. Lask is not yet as deep, although they all, and mostly because of injuries. Sturm Graz have played Europa League and a tight schedule and they have barely in injuries. That's another thing that has to be looked into. At that point, then Sturm were pressing it. Uh, Lask had some, uh, some good saves in there, but while Sturm were pressing, Lask also hit them all on, on the counter attack. It was a little bit odd. The way the goal uh, uh, came because it was a deep ball that got Gazi Begovic who puts it in and a mega uh, clear free there. Where was the last defense? Then uh, Emega almost could have made it 2-1 when looking at a really bad back pass with his head, which is one of the few errors that he has done all season long. On the other side, a great combination, and this was before the 1-1 between Goiganger and Schul. I just think if one one times the shot, this could have been 2-0, and then Nakamura has a, a golden chance to make it 2-1 uh, late on. It was really, really interesting. It was a fitting end to the Bundesliga, um, I don't want to say so, a season, but you know, to the year in the Bundesliga, because those were two of the best teams in Austria really going for it uh, at, at each other. Both coaches in the end said, yeah, probably the, uh, the draw was uh, good, but everyone felt that maybe the win was in there. So, you know, it's kind of this mixed bag. And so going into this break until mid-February, so it's a long break. And uh, don't forget, uh, there's a cup round a week before. We have, as I said, one, two and three 
Uh, seventy or so three. That's a little bit shaky because Rapid couldn't move in in there. But Lasky six points behind Sturm and Sturm uh, six points behind Salzburg. So uh, clear, clear, clear there. Um, and Lask just uh, based on the start of the season, death dead. I think the better teams, Rapid, also seem to be uh, better in there. Austria Vienna falling out of the top six is the big one, and on the bottom. Alltag Rieder and Hartberg uh, with Lusten and Ausnahmes win, they also move themselves up, but I don't trust anything because in the spring, when the points are halved, everything could look very differently. Uh, when we look at the expected final regular season standings on the left side, uh, as I said, one and two seem cemented, and three also. There's a clear tendency towards Lask to finish the regular season. Rapid Vienna should probably finish in fourth. And then it's a fight. I would say three teams for two spots. I don't think that Wolfsburg and Lustner will feature in there at the moment. Hartberg are nailed on in last place, but Ried and Alltag are in there. Um, going forward, then, when we add the playoff rounds, uh, not much changes, uh, except that, you know, Tirol is now ahead of Austria Vienna, who lead the, uh, the, um, the lower table. Uh, but it will be really, really tight there. So this will be the thing to look forward to for the remainder of the year. And we have still uh, six rounds to be played. So it's it's a substantial part there. Uh, the league comes back. I don't have to... I, I know who is playing whom, but we don't have any fixtures. So I'm not giving it to you. Let's move over to Germany to a uh, wildly entertaining midweek round. And it started out... Uh, really well with uh, Wolfsburg beating uh, Dortmund 2-0. I'm saying really well because this was kind of this exclamation point where Dortmund just could not break down Wolfsburg. And this was Wolfsburg that had a really, really, really bad start to the season. But suddenly they're clicking. Van der Ven gets the first goal early, early on. Wolfsburg controlling the game and Mecha uh, finally makes in stoppage time 2-0. Uh, Deserved win, I have, have to say. Werder Bremen had the game at Bayern at 1-1 in the 10th minute. Musiala giving the lead. Jung, an equalizer. Chupo Moting even misses a penalty. Then Mane has to come off. This was the big headline because this, he still called up for Senegal, but he might not make it. But then within um, a 10-minute span, 20th to 30th, Gnabry, Goretzka, uh, and again Gnabry. And the game is out of sight. They add two more. Again, Gnabry uh, completes his hat-trick. And then Matisse Tell, who is the young guy, also go, going in there. Uh, pretty uh, rough night for Bremen. Rough night also for Klapp, because Bochum had an early 2-0 lead to Antwerp J and then Hoffmann in the 12th minute. Uh, and for a long time it looked like they will see this out, but player pulls one back in the 60 second. Then Klapp, Klapp, Klapp pressing. Even got an equalizer that was call, called off. Uh, for an offside, but it was rather, rather tight, and uh, Gladbach were not happy with that one at all. They felt it should have ended 2-2, so Gladbach, another bad result for them. Stuttgart win it at the death against Hertha, which was a huge win for, for them. Again, flip-flopping Hertha, because Hertha and Stuttgart, this is a head-to-head -head duel for who will go in the relegation zone, unless Bochum or Schalke get really a run together. Köln! Had that Derby more or less under control. And then within six minutes, Amiri and Diaby. I mean, at the, um, I don't want to say it was an undeserved. I think the equalizer, maybe I could consider, but the go heck heck goal by Diaby was a little bit much because honestly, Kern would have deserved the draw and had the chances to make it uh, a draw. Just was not meant to be. And Kern uh, have a rather bad end to end of season. Opposite for Frankfurt, who just irresistible against uh, Hoffenheim. After 30 minutes, it was already a 3-0 lead uh, to Musa So, Kolomuani and Ebimbe. Uh, Baumgartner uh, pull and Kabak pulled two back before Lindstrom in the 56th already make it 4-2. Uh, could have been more. Uh, Frankfurt really, really good, as is Leipzig. The Rose effect is taking place, and you know, with Max Ebel, the Gladbach connection is coming, although the Gladbach fans are everything, anything but happy. Um, they control the game. Freiburg could hold on for a while, but as soon as Simakan made, made it 1 0, there was only one win and Kunku shortly after 2 0. Even when Kübler pulled one back, it was not meant, meant to be because of Forsberg penalty. Makes it 3 1, deserved win there. Schalke get a big one over Mainz, 1 0. Um, and then Union Berlin have uh, twice the lead, but Augsburg could twice equalize in short succession. And so all the teams that have been challenging Bayern, Dortmund, Losing, 
Freiburg losing, Union not losing, but dropping points, so the gap widened considerably. And for Dortmund, got got in worse because Gladbach totally outplayed those guys. Uh, then on Friday was a really, really entertaining first half. It was ended 3-2 with Gladbach just deadly on the count counter track, especially the double between Benzabeni and Thuram to make it uh, from 1-1 to 3-1. But Schlotterbeck pulls one back 10 minutes later. Uh, and then Dortmund really wanted to get it and immediately uh, get uh, a goal in the 46 through Kone. Uh, even Hoffmann then had, had many 5-5-2. It was really then swinging with that 4-4-2. Dortmund were just done. And it was swinging towards Gladbach. Both of them playing in rainbow uh, colors to, you know, in uh, to kind of protest the Qatar World Cup and pro-human pro rights. Say what you want. Um, Lever, uh, um, Bochum, another big win at Augsburg and not un undeserve it. Uh, Leverkusen get a almost expected win against Stuttgart. So uh, and that comp is compiled with Hertha winning against Köln. Hertha taking a one nil lead, then Köln having a couple of chances, a few they have a wide open goal, two meters ahead of the goal goal, and you pull it on the cross. But stuff like that, Köln should have equal. But uh, as soon as it's two nil. Hertha had that in the back. Hoffenheim had a 1 0 lead, uh, I think, through Baum Baumgartner. Wolfsburg turned that around too. Wolfsburg is in really, really good form as a Leipzig. Uh, yes, Bremen gave them a challenge, but Andres Hiller gets an early, early goal, and even when Kroos equalizes, they have the answer through Xaver Schlager again. Andres Silva instrumental there. Bayern again, another, it was not a great performance, but Gnabry and Chupo Moting on both sides of the half scored the goals. Bayern getting another win, cementing their place. A little bit of a disappointment given the Mainz just lost to Schalke. Um, Frankfurt only won one in the Derby. But you know, Burkhardt gets it, Kolomiani missed a few chances, uh, gets an equalizer late. And the Freiburg Union game was one that I, um, you know, I really had earmarked. It was not meant to be because Lask and Milan were playing at that time, at that game was on. But I thought this could be a really interesting one. But after 10 minutes, maybe 20, 20 minutes, it was more or less done because 4th and 6th, Grifo scores 2. One were by a penalty, the other one assisted by Gregoric. But then another penalty on the Union side that Knoche misses and then late is her sand off in the 9th in, in and then Grifo converts the penalty. So it's 3 0 and Gregoric adds a 4th. The game was done at the half. So uh, Freiburg cement themselves. At the moment, as potentially the second power in Germany, as we can see in the standings, uh, Leipzig are right behind, and Frankfurt also moved now. And Union Berlin a little bit coming in, or a little bit of regression to the mean, if you like. Um, few weeks ago, we had that there was only a point between each of the top places, but now Bayern with a four-point lead, you cannot see them giving up that lead and you know the only team other than uh, Bayern is Leipzig with a 1% chance seems to be a foregone conclusion Dortmund should though make it in the, in the Champions League uh, but we'll see who are the favorites there on the bottom this is I think again the Bundesliga is always most exciting for the relegation battles because the way the, the, uh, the teams are evenly matched it really really makes it tight I mean you see um Bochum 13 to, I would say, arguably, arguably Wolfsburg is 10 points. From Wolfsburg, uh, 23 to 33, um, you're almost at Bayern. So, you know, Wolfsburg 7th is further away from Bayern than they are to Bochum. It is really, 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 really tight. But it really gets into the interesting, I think... Köln may be safe, because I think they are good, good enough, but Augsburg, Hertha, Stuttgart, Bochum, Schalke, those are fighting. And at the moment, it does not look good for uh, Schalke. Uh, and I think Bochum will also will have a rough time. Um, so we got to see how it goes, uh, pans out. In the expected standing, it's Augsburg, Bochum and Schalke at the moment. And the top four is at the moment Freiburg ahead of Frankfurt. But it's really, 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 really tight between those two and you know there's a cup place also in there the Bundesliga comes back at the end of January in the 20th and we'll start out with a big one between Leipzig and uh, Bayern 
that is the last. I almost want to say it's the last chance if anyone wants to catch Bayern. It's maybe a good chance because Bayern doesn't do well coming back from longer uh, breaks. A sentimental du uh, duel for me is Köln against Bremen. Uh, that used to be in the 90s uh, between the two biggest Austrian stars, the duel. Um, other than that, I'm just looking through Wolfsburg. Freiburg is interesting uh, with the way Wolfsburg have been doing. Um, Gladbach Leverkusen sleeper in a way. But you know, uh, it will change once we get there. I'm sure it will be an interesting round and then as a midweek round and so on. It's done rather packed coming up. So that's it for, for, for the year from me regarding the two Bundesligas. Uh, please let me know if you want to add anything. Uh, if you have a question in the comments below, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel to see more videos like this. I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so that you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.